We had a question recently about deferred updates in Modo, so I thought I would do a quick demonstration to show how they work. So here's a mesh that I have. It's a single mesh item and it is uh, fairly dense. Uh, this was created using uh, Mesh Fusion. And I'm going to actually uh, use a replicator to uh, populate this around a plane. So let me create the plane really quickly. I'll just hold shift and click on this um, kind of spring or spiral tube mesh. And then I'll press 3 to go into polygons mode, select the plane, and just scale this up in the Z and X uh, plane, like so. And I'm just going to reactivate the scale tool so we can make it very large. Okay. So in the schematic, I'm going to pull the plane into uh, the schematic here. And I'm going to create a few items. I'm going to create a replicator and a surface particle generator. So first, I'll create the replicator. So here is our replicator. I'll just drag that into the schematic as well. And I'm also going to add a uh, surface particle generator. So here's our surface particle generator. I'll drag that in. Now the surface particle generator is looking for a mesh source, so I'll drag the plane in. And as soon as I do that, uh, you can see all of the uh, kind of uh, particles are on the plane. Let me just press Control-1 to bring up my main pie menu and toggle the grid work plane off. And uh, if I press Control-2 to bring up uh, the display pie menu, I'll just go into wireframe really quickly. Now you can see here, uh, all of our particles are clustered in uh, the top left quadrant of our plane. So let me just select the surface particle generator and make some adjustments. So the first thing I'll do is change the uh, average spacing from 100 millimeters to 1 meter. And that just kind of spreads the particles out. So now there is uh, 1 meter between each particle. Uh, and I might actually change that to 2 meters because I, I don't want it to be that close together. And actually, let's bump that up to 5 meters and see what we get. Okay, great. So then I'm going to uh, press Control 2 to bring up my display pie menu again, and I'll go back to the defo default uh, mode. And I'm going to pipe the surface particle generator output into the particle source of our replicator. Now, if I were to uh, uh, connect the uh, FO for fusion output castle mesh item into the prototype, uh, we'll see what happens. It works, but we're getting some kind of laggy performance. Now I could, I could press O while mousing in the uh, 3D viewport, and in drawing and control, I can change replicators from all to uh, none, and that way we get much better performance because the replicas are showing up as a bounding box. Uh, but that's not our only option. Uh, in addition to this, I can just press O and. Uh, put the replicators back to all. And now our performance is a little bit laggy, but I can uh, disconnect the mesh from the prototype. And we can actually convert uh, the prototype, or in this case, the uh, fusion output castle uh, mesh item to a deferred mesh. So I'll select the uh, mesh item that I want to change into a deferred mesh. I'll right click on it and I'll come down to, uh, let's see, change type, procedural, deferred mesh. And that's going to ask me to uh, create a, an external file, uh, which will be an LXDF. So I'll just call this uh, castle underscore 001 and click save. And now uh, we have uh, a deferred mesh in our uh, scene. You can see this little gray cube is the icon for deferred mesh. So if I go to select this item now, you can see it's surrounded by a bounding box. And if I press 3 to go into polygons mode, I can no longer actually select the polygons to edit it. Um, but it's a much lighter, uh, much more lightweight um, item. So if I actually now uh, come over to the properties for this deferred mesh, uh, you can see I can change the uh, render type to uh, only render uh, direct or indirect only or one surface. And I also have uh, how it's going to display in GL in the 3D viewport. So I, I can have it uh, show all the entire surface or the current surface or direct surfaces as boxes. And if I do that, you'll see that in the 3D viewport, it actually uh, literally turns into uh, boxes. Now the amount of boxes can be uh, controlled with the box detail input field right here. So at the moment, 
it's being created by 100 boxes. If I put that down to zero, it will just display as a single box. And if I bump that up to something like 500, uh, it will get a little bit closer to its actual um, form. And I think we can go all the way up to 1,000. Uh, let me try 5,000. Yeah, so you can get pretty, uh, you can go up pretty high with this. Let me try 10,000. No, so I think it caps off at about 5,000. But um, okay, so let's put it down to something like 100. And now let's put this deferred update. Uh, let's make this the prototype for our replicator. Now we're getting really good performance. And instead of seeing uh, the square bounding box, we're actually getting a, a slightly better representation of our, uh, of our item or our deferred mesh. So let me put that back up to 5,000. And this is even better. So we're getting the best of both worlds. We're getting good performance and we're getting uh, a visual representation of what our actual mesh looks like. And the best part about this is if I press F8 to fire off a preview render, we're actually seeing uh, the, the mesh, that uh, the actual source mesh. So Moto is actually referencing the file, uh, the LXDF file that we created instead of seeing the bounding boxes.